Thank you. This is what I need. So welcome and thanks for waiting. We needed to fix the microphone first. Um, so let me introduce briefly myself. Uh, I'm Thomas King. I'm the CTO of DKIX and I want to talk about uh, IPFIX at IXPs and how you can get insights into what's going on on your IXP. And uh, let me briefly motivate that a bit um, why this is helpful. So for instance, if you are connected to an IXP and most of you most probably are, then it can happen that there comes more traffic than the port you have with that IXP can handle. So let's assume you have a 10G port and there's a DDoS coming in with uh, 20 uh, gigabits per second, then uh, you can't ha handle that, right? And, um, and you most probably can't get insight on what kind of traffic or where the traffic is coming from, so you can't uh, easily um, set up uh, countermeasures to fight that DDoS. Um, and so we were thinking, and we had conversations with our customers about that, and um, how we can give you insights into what's going on uh, on the DKIX IXPs. Um, and we wanted to uh, make that available um, without any changes on the customer peers router. Um, and, uh, and, and also we didn't want to add any additional load on that router. So we were thinking about what can DKIX do to provide that information. So uh, we were coming up with something that uh, we already do with our peering LAN is that we, uh, for our own purposes, we do uh, for the monitoring and the statistics you can get uh, from DKIX in the portal, uh, we already have configured IP fix. And uh, what we do is we just filter that IP fix so that you can get an IP fix stream of your port um, via DKIX. And let me a little bit uh, deep dive into what you can get and what you can do with that. Um, so IPFIX is uh, most probably a well-known format for packet sampling. Um, it's defined in RFC um, 7011. It comes with templates, a lot of data fields. We can't provide all that data fields uh, because we are layer two provider, right? So you mainly look into layer two and layer three stuff. So uh, MAC addresses, uh, IP addresses, so uh, from the routers where the traffic is coming from. Um, and um, yeah, there's a, a few links about the documentation, how that works, and we have example here um, with uh, what you then get if you switch this feature on. Um, and let me uh, jump a bit on how we have implemented that. So that's actually the IXP here, right? What you see here, the routers uh, w where you connect with your peering router to the DKIX routers. And then these routers generate the IPFIX stream. Um, and uh, that goes um, into our backend systems um, so that we can uh, filter that IP fix stream because uh, for data protection reasons, right, we want to make sure that you only get the um, IP fix samples for, the, uh, for your data, not from your other peer, for your neighboring peer, only the traffic for, um, uh, only the, the uh, IP fix samples for your traffic. Um, and then we send that over the internet to an, uh, to an IP fix collector of your choice. You tell us which IP, uh, IP fix collector you want to use, the IP address of that one, and we send it there. Um, and of course we do that uh, in, in an encrypted way, so we have, we have encryption in between, um, and we have also open source tools uh, to set this up, and I will talk about this in a second, how you can do that. Um, we have a few, um, yeah, um, a few technical parameters here. So the sampling rate is one to two thousand frames. Um, sorry, ten thousand frames. Um, so uh, it's very rough, but it still gives you an, an overview of where the traffic is coming from, especially if you're on a massive DDoS um, fighting situation. Um, and this is how we have implemented it. Um, this is how you switch it on. So you go to our um, portal. Uh, we have a new portal, so this is, um, we have a better portal, how we call it today. Um, this is um, our better portal URL, which provides a lot of self-service functions. So if you want to, you know, change the MAC address or order a new um, peering service or a cloud connectivity service or whatever, you just can go into the portal, uh, click a few buttons and um, can um, change the services and they will be permissioned on demand. And the same is true with uh, the IPFIX export. Uh, you just go there. Uh, if we have more than one port with DKIX or Clo peer service, how we call it. Um, so um, if you have more than one, you select the one you want to use. Uh, we differentiate it by the MAC address that is assigned to this particular port. 
um, and then uh, you tell us the um, IPv4 address of your IPfix collector, so where you want to get this, um, the data to be sent to so that you can analyze it, um, and you can st start and stop this. Um, and this is what you can do in the portal. That's everything what you need to do, then you get the IPfix stream yourself. So now um, you, you get the IPfix stream, but not all of you might have um, analytics tools in place so that you can analyze the traffic which is coming, um, or the, the IPfix stream which is coming um, to your new uh, configured IP address. We have a solution for that as well because there are very valid open source tools available out there which you can easily configure. Um, and uh, be but before I come to that, let me briefly uh, describe a little bit more how we do that because we'll use a lot of uh, open source tools here to set this up. So this is again our uh, IP fix stream, right? Uh, internally, which comes from from our um, IX here in Frankfurt, for instance. Then we filter it for the different customers, encrypt it with the, uh, with the keys, which is you know um, different for each and every single customer, um, and then we send it out. Um, and for this, uh, we use Vermont. I don't know who is aware of that tool, but it's very, very uh, powerful, uh, very scalable. Uh, we have done scalable tests with that and it looks very, uh, very good for what we need to do. Um, and we have um, then another open source tool, uh, which is linked on the next slide, I think. No, on that slide. Uh, here we have an open source tool um, to uh, encrypt everything, a DTLS wrapper. Um, which you can use also for on your side if you get the uh, the IP fix stream, uh, which is encrypted by DTLS. You can uh, unwrap it and then have it um, in, in plain text and can use it for yourself. But let's come back a bit uh, how we really do it. Um, so we have Vermont here who is doing all of this, right? Um, all of the the filtering and then we have the DTLS wrappers to send it out. Uh, of course, we have our web server and our portal where you can switch it on and off and then configure automatically. And uh, as I said, we, we do this with one Vermont instance and we uh, reload the configs um, um, based on, on the actions you are doing and then uh, you get the stream. That really is very powerful. Um, yeah, and, uh, and uh, then there are different tools which you can use to fight the DDoS attack. For instance, uh, PM Act is quite powerful to give you uh, insights on, on the traffic which, um, which is you know, flowing over the, the internet exchange. Um, it's, it's also open source. Uh, and FastNetMon is actually a tool which you can use uh, to directly fight uh, DDoS attacks, which generates um, filter filters to your routers so that you can, for instance, uh, disable peerings with, um, uh, with a peer where the traffic is coming from, the DDoS attack is coming from, so that you can reroute it or black hole it or whatever. Um, and um, we have also some, uh, some nice graphic in our portal already, so um, you can go into the portal and see what's going on traffic-wise, but there's even a better tool uh, which is uh, called Elastic Flow, and I stole this uh, slide from from the guys uh, from Freifunk from Munich because Anika did a very nice presentation ac um, actually about this um, the the IPfix exporter tool, and I just stole that slide from her uh, because it's really nice, um, and she is using Elastic Flow for for analyzing the traffic from Freifunk Munich. Um, and um, and that's um, yeah. Uh, Elastic Flow is an open source tool. You can just download it, and you just direct the IP fix stream to it, and it does all the magic uh, then for you, and generates very nice graphs about um, about the traffic, where it's coming from, what is the rate, what kind of traffic it is. So it's super powerful to get an understanding of um, of what's going on. Um, in this case, um, at the IXP, but in general, you can use it for for getting insights into into your network. It's like Cantik, just open source, and you need to host it yourself. Uh, but uh, in a sense, it's an elastic search with some tooling around and some pre configuration. And uh, yeah, it works out of the box. So it's really, really something you can look into. Um, and this is uh, how the Freifunk guys do it. And um, yeah, a few other customers also use it this way. So it's very simple to set it up and, and use it um, without spending a lot of time and energy getting it up and running. Yeah, and this um, 
the um, now this is what we have today, right? We uh, currently about 50 customers use it already. Um, it's still a better uh, service. We call better services. Um, we call a service in a better state. If we not sh if we are not sure if we want to continue providing it, uh, we want to test it in the market to see what the customer feedback is. Um, however, we have about 50 customers using it, so I'm, I'm pretty sure we will continue providing it. Um, but it also um, is in better state because we uh, we want to be able to change it very quickly based on customer demand. So if you know if there's a, a special requirement coming up from a couple of customers, we want to be able to change the features um, and how we provide it very quickly. So please keep it in mind. It's a better service. Um, we will evolve it very quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, these are some of the enhancements we can foresee. So for instance, uh, configuring the transport port would be something very simple, most um, uh, yeah, um, most probably, um, so that you can configure the, the transport port for your um, for your IPfix uh, collector, so that you can have different sources at different um, yeah, you can configure different sources uh, to one to one um, uh, IPfix collector. Um, then. Um, we want to show you also in the portal an overview of which exports you already have configured. Currently, you don't see that very well. It's a bit tricky to, to see that. We want to enhance that. Uh, we want also to provide IPv6, right? Because IPv4 is deprecated. Um, so we need to uh, switch to IPv6 to be future-proof. Um, and we want to introduce this kind of service at other locations as well. Because currently, uh, we provide it in Frankfurt and New York. I think we have already rolled it out there. Um, but we want to provide it at other locations as well. We do that also based on customer demand. So if a few customers tell us, you know, Munich should be next, we will roll it out there as next. Um, and of course, uh, more documentation and more, um, uh, you know, you know uh, more guidelines on how to use it and presentations like this is what we want to do as well, making our, um, our peers aware of this kind of service because it's a free service, right? You can use it um, just by switching on and off. Um, we don't charge for that, um, and I think it provides a lot of value, especially with uh, if you have a business where you get a lot of massive DDoS attacks, then it's a very helpful tool. Um, and um, so we have a webinar already on our academy, so there's a link for that. Go there, and you can already see how how um, you can configure it. It's, it is a little bit more on the operational side, so if you really want to know how to set up things and, and how to use it, then um, that's the source to go to. And uh, this brings me more or less already to the uh, end of my presentation. So um, I have introduced what, uh, why it's uh, useful to have this kind of insights uh, into the IXP, into UIXP, where you are connected, because there's a lot of things going on inside the IXP. And for some of you, it's really required that you get insights. So some of the largest uh, customers which we have, big CDNs use this feature as well, because they want to better understand what's going on inside the IXP, which you currently can't very often do yourself uh, because your router just has an outside view, right? You can't see what's, what's going on inside the IX. Um, we, uh, we, we encrypt everything, right? So it's encrypted um, when we send out the IPfix stream, so it should be safe from a data protection perspective. Um, and uh, we will spend more time on, uh, um, on on tools that can analyze the data stream, but we ha um, as I have already shown, we ha there are a lot of open source tools out there that do a great job in this regard. Um, so I'm a bit reluctant to spend too much time putting uh, this, this kind of features into our, into our portal. Uh, however, we will enhance our portal a bit more to, so that you can get insights directly without um, setting up um, um, the tools yourself. Um, and as I said, it's um, it's fr uh, it's a free beta service. Um, it will stay for free uh, even if it's uh, grown out of beta, right? But currently, it's a beta service, and uh, it will stay in this uh, direction, I guess, for for a couple of months uh, until we have really a stable product. And uh, from a from a feature perspective, it's stable if you use it. But from a feature perspective, also very stable product. And then. Uh, yeah, then we will have uh, this as a feature of our peering services. That's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Any questions, comments about what we do here? Sorry, more than questions, just clarifications. Uh, you said that on the customer side, there's a collector, right? 
Right. Who's handling the collector? Is it the customer itself, or you provide like configuration for them? No. Um, what you need to do yourself, uh, this is uh, what, what the Munich guys do from Freifunk, right? Uh, they have set up Elastic Flow and uh, um, the, the uh, UDP TLS, uh, DTLS wrapper themselves. This is what you need to do. Um, on your side, or you uh, send the, the IP fix stream to Kentic or whatever, um, whatever IP fix collector you use, you either need to host it yourself or use a hosted service from another company. So we don't provide that. Okay. What we provide is a very basic, um, which I showed, which I showed, I think, in, in this, no, it's other direction. Um, on this slide, what we do is we have a, sorry, we have a very basic um, view in our portal, which gives you some insights what's going on, but it's not as powerful as, um, as the open source tools which you can use. So you need to set it up yourself if you really want to have the full power. And between uh, the uh, collector facing the network and the customer collector, do you have a message broker or there's like a point-to-point -point connectivity between the two? Um, so we have a kind of message broker. We call it a bit different. Uh, so this is our uh, Verimont instance I was talking about. This is what, um, you know, the, the IP fix stream is generated by the routers, right? Like we have a slide for that thing here. This is where the, uh, these are the DKX Frankfurt routers, for instance, right? They generate the IP fix streams themselves. Mm -hmm. That goes to the Verimont um, uh, instance, which does the filtering and, and the encryption and everything, and then sends it over the internet to the IP fix collector of a customer. Okay, so on Verimont, you have some processing job taking care of filtering the traffic. And exactly. Ah, this okay. is happening here. Okay. So that you only see the IP fix stream um, of your data. Not of, okay. of the data, of the traffic uh, of, of your neighboring peer. It's only your, your uh, internet traffic you're sending over the IX. Okay, thank you. So we filter it here. So we, this is what you mean by yeah, yeah. message broker, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions or comments? Do you know how many customers of you are using this um, uh, solution and are consuming? Uh, so the last time I checked, and it's um, a couple of, uh, of months old, this number, it was about 50, 50 customers. So, uh, you know, this is something uh, we have introduced I, um, roughly a year ago, um, and we started very slowly with uh, announcing it because we wanted to test the system, um, and so... Um, during our last tech meeting, for instance, we were announcing it to a bigger audience and then we saw an uptake and most probably after this presentation here we will see an uptake as well. Um, so we, we really want to grow it slowly because we have uh, more than 1,000 1, networks connected in for, uh, Frankfurt, for instance. So if all of them would switch it on day one, you know, I, I'm not sure if, that, if we really have the operational experience already to handle that. Um, because we see here and there we need to do some optimizations, right? Uh, how to, for instance, how to run this Vermont uh, um, instance and things like that, how many RAM it consumes and all this kind of stuff, right? So the, the typical operational issues which you have if you need to provide something on scale. So we really grow it slowly. This is also why it's better, because we need to gain uh, operational experience. Go ahead, please. I think we still have time, right? You tell me, yeah? Are you planning to, to sell like the, um, the, um, uh, the old service as a service, like the collector as a service, instead of having like the collector handled by the customer side? So having like centralized, I don't know, on Amazon or like on one of these providers? Um, I get this question from time to time, but I'm, uh, you know, we are an, an IXP provider and we guess we're pretty good at what we do, but I think we would be very bad at uh, hosting uh, IP fix collector. There are other companies out there like Kentic, and there are a few others out there, right, that provide that as a service. So you should talk to them instead of us. Okay. We, are, we are not, you know, we don't have experience. With because you don't think it's commercially valuable solution or it's technically difficult to implement it? For us, it would be technically uh, difficult to implement. For, Kentic, for the Kentic guys, it's probably easy because that's okay. what their day-to-day -day job is, right? So they are specialists in that. We are experts in running IXPs. We are not so much experts in running IP fix collectors okay. on scale. That's a different, different topic, I guess. Clear. Thank you. Okay. Any more okay. questions? Uh, I would like to ask you a question. 
who of you is interested in this kind of service of this, you know, from, from this community? Because, okay, I see one hand at least, two, three. So would you go to the portal later on and switch it on? Yeah? And, and if there is an issue, please drop me an email. I want to know about that. Yeah? That would be lovely. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much.